Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Manny. Um, I've done a few of these videos on taking apart a ribbon. Uh, today we have a T-Bone RB500. Uh, to those that don't know, T-Bone I think are the most popular ribbons in like Europe. Um, but they're technically Chinese. Um, Apex, looks like an Apex 210. 205s are smaller I think. So it's just a... A stock body. I'm not sure if T-Bone replaces ribbons or do whatever, but most of the times when you open one of these, uh, the ribbon is really, uh, and I mean terrible, like it's made out of some kind of alloy or some other kind of aluminum where almost as, as it comes out of the factory, um, the foil starts to lose its shine and it becomes dull, very weird. It's almost like a chemical reaction. Um, so anyways, uh, it's a good thing to replace these. So today we're going to take this apart for a friend of mine who sent this from Europe and he really wants this mic to sound the best as, as, it, as it can. So I'm going to, I would say attempt, but I will, uh, re-ribbon this and hopefully show you how to take apart a T-bone, which is the same as an Ampex 210 but symbolically 205 and a lot of the ribbons that look like this that come from China, they kind of come apart the same way. Um, uh, one cool thing about these mics is that the tr transducer of the motor inside is almost identical to an AEA, uh, uh, what is that, uh, R84. And uh, I'll show you inside once I get it. So first, um, we're going to be taking this apart. I do have some tools that you'll end up having to spend a little bit of time getting. These little uh, little ratchet sets, um, some assortment of tweezers. Uh, these are really cool. These are plastic. They're really great for handling rib ribbons. Um, I do recommend this style of mic if you're if you've never re-ribboned something before. This is one of the first ones I worked on. It's still a challenge to get it to re-ribbon this, but technically speaking, uh, everything's accessible, it's pretty easy to open up, and the ribbons are a little bit bigger, so if you are first time cutting ribbons, uh, this would work. Um, the trick on these mics is to get the tension right, and to make sure that after you've set it up that it sounds um, really clear, and that the ribbon is not uh, touching the magnet. So we're going to take this apart. Just take off these little side nuts or bolts, whatever you'd consider. I have a little washer there, so don't want to lose that little washer. And always have a little spot you can keep your uh, paraphernalia. And I do this a lot. And as you can tell, I do have a few things over here. This is a an RCA, it's called an SK46. I'm working on this too. And I put the transducer in this little bag here. So I try to keep things the best I can organized. Um, on, on the deck right now is this, but I was working on this and I decided to, on the fly, do this. So it's out of order, but why not? All right, so we just did that. This pretty easy is gonna be popping off that. Okay, now, you just have to be careful because the cable is attached to this. But you do need to remove this to remove uh, these side bolts so you can remove the head basket. Cool design. Just got a cable that goes right into the back. Um, this is where you would connect your mic to it so it's controlling how you move it. Uh, heavy, you know, it's obviously made, made well. Even for Chinese uh, parts, there's a reason why these companies all use them because it's pretty, um, you know, it's going to last, not the ribbons. So as you can tell, there's another little washer in this one. We'll keep that together. So we know we have washers on the outside bolt and we're going to have washers on these inside bolts. There you go. All right, so now that you remove those, um, there's gonna be th one, two, three, three sc screws that hold in this. Now what is important 
is that there is a front and then there, there is a back. The front will be uh, positive and the rear will be negative. If you get that the other way around or you put the head basket on the other way, we're even talking this, uh, if you look at your waveform, uh, to be positive or to be face correct, the waveform will go up in your Pro Tools or whatever dial you're using. If it's out of phase, it'll go down. So if I was to say, hey, on the back side, you would see it go down. And if I went, hey, on the front side, you would see the wave go up. So if you can imagine it, it's kind of like my hands, like the waves, uh, that would be in phase, in phase, but the back side is reversed. So the front goes up and the back side goes down. Yeah, with brown hands, that's the way it looks like. All right, take it easy. Okay, so uh, let's get this, these screws out. All right, put those in the safe haven for parts. screw. I do uh, have these little foam things which kind of hold it in place. I do use that. It's just, you know, it looks like an owl shape. It kind of holds any mic, small mic, big mics, hold, holds it in place while you work on it. I also have these, which are really cool. Uh, these vices are excellent for working. I'm not sure if I'll be using that one today, but um, we will. Uh, we will find out. I haven't done a Apex or a T-Bone in a while. And you know what? Um, the T-Bones sound pretty good. You know, they're cheap and they're affordable, but if you can uh, get the ribbon replaced and get them up to par. So I'm taking off the top. So the head basket should come out pretty easy. Not as easy as I thought. Why are you giving me a problem today? All right, so as I open it, you can see something came loose inside. All righty. I think that is a uh, washer on the inside. So we'll put that to the side. Little bit more difficult now some people remove these there's another one so this one is a little bit different than other ones i've seen obviously it's kind of dirty so there's another one we're going to put that aside as you can tell you see that little square mark right there i'm assuming that's where these ones go on the inside. Now, the Apex that usually come, uh, they just come with this and that. And then they've added this on the inside. I'm not sure what this would really do because it's pretty opened up. I'm assuming it's to protect the screen, but also if you notice, these already have a cool screen and this type of material is glued on the inside so it's kind of heavy duty and a little bit extra but because this is my buddy's mic we're going to put this back the same way so um mental note the cage and if you look on the inside there's nothing else um so in order it'd be this cage this goes inside. Um, this screen will go over this cage. And then that will go on top. And then within the mic, you will find uh, the transducer here. So we're going to put that aside. 
Also, I'm doing this on the spot. Don't hate me if I say something correct, incorrect, or uh, I'm just doing this for fun, uh, just to kind of show you a little bit of an insight. So if you find one of these mics, you can hopefully make it sound a little bit better. Um, all right, so like I mentioned, there is a front side and a back side. Usually the side that you're going to be um, replacing the ribbon on would be the front. You can see the wires running in. But see, these wires look like they're running in to the back. So as I'm looking at this mic, that I'm assuming would probably be the front. I have to take off the screen to see. Well, let's do that. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, there they are. So this is going to be the front. And usually the way it works is, um, well, like most, these wires that come in, a lot of them come into the top, but I'm assuming this is uh, they're gonna be the front. So when we get done with it, what I'm gonna do is a little trick I'll show you. Hold on. So to make sure, cause some of these mics come back backwards, I got this unit. Even though there's two, I'll call it one unit. It's called a Cricut, made by Galaxy Audio. And what's cool about the Cricut is this one has a built-in mic right there. So you turn it on and you point this at your speaker in your DAW. This side has a speaker in it. So you'll turn this on. That's flashing green. And when I get done with this mic, if I want to test it, I'll put this in front of the ribbon. This mic will flash green if that's positive. If I go to the back side, it'll flash red for negative. What that will tell me is that the polarity on this, is it correct? So even though I'm wondering, that's pretty sure that's the front, I will double check it again. And if it is a problem where this mic is what I would consider wired up the other way around, um, I can go inside and switch the transducer so then it becomes outright. So I probably will do that. But anyways, the Cricut is totally amazing for ribbon mics. Um, I think they're about a hundred bucks on Amazon. This is a Cricut R, a Cricut S, um, runs on a battery. Um, so make sure you always turn it off. Uh, that little, little hole right there is for the speaker. This one you'd put on your NS10s or whatever, you know, speakers that you use. Uh, and then this unit, you put it in front of the mic uh, with this speaker making that pulse sound. And you hold it in front of the mic and it will pulse red, that's the polarity, you gotta switch it, or green, uh, that's proper. And that'll be the front and the back of Ruben. So there you go. Take it with a grain of salt. There's probably 15 other ways that you can figure that out, but that's the way I like to do it. And uh, the Manny way is the Manny way. So I have a recording studio called Suplex Audio. I'm a producer at, you know, foremost, that's what I do for my living. Um, I'm in a band called the Chavez Ravine. And um, I have a ribbon mic company called the Original Gravity Wave Microphone Company. Even though you see me modding these ribbons, I am working on some prototypes and I hopefully will have a, some cool ribbons coming out. And I think the design because I've learned first on all these different sizes of ribbons and formats, it's given me a lot of crazy cool ideas on what I would wanna do if I had my own ribbon mics. So I decided to make my own ribbon mics and that's what I'll be sharing with you maybe in the next coming months. All right, so we're gonna put the little foam thing under this just to kind of keep it in play as we work on it. Let me turn this around. Also, I do like working on these boards. Um, these are self-healing, um, you know, if you got a razor blade and if you cut it, it, it self-heals. It just, you know, it's crazy. 
Alrighty, so here we are. We're going to be taking off these two bolts to access the ribbon. So when we remove these, just remember how things were, how things went. First of all, though, we have to find out what ratchet we're gonna use. So we're gonna do some testing here. I don't remember, I usually have these marked, but it's been a while. So let's see here. Uh, that one it, no. Those ones are not doing it. That's not doing it either. We've struck out here. That one's too big. I must have been this guy. No. All right, so let's go back to the drawing board. Let me go through my box of things. Let's see if I have one in here. Thought I had it down. Thought I was good to go. How in the heck am I missing this? Um, oh boy. Let's see. Let's try this again. I'm digging around here. Sorry about that. Grab a soda pop or coffee. That's gonna be it. Let's try that one. All right. What are we doing here? We are just uh, floundering here in front of YouTube. All 46 people that will see this. All right, hold on a second. We got it. All right, so that's there. That is not going to work for that one. Um, all right. What is going on here? We are just... It's not working out right. Where are you, magic part? Is there a cache to this? There is a cache to this. That's gonna do it? Yes, okay. So, let's find the right part. Again, that looks good. Sure, there's an easier way to get this going on, but we're winging it. That is difficult to take off. Alrighty. So that's the first screw. Let's put it in our little area for that. There will be a washer there. Now we got to make sure we got that washer on. We're gonna do this other one. Also, there's a lot of guys that do this, you know. There's a lot of cats around the United States and Europe that are really, really smart and really good at doing what I'm doing. So this is nothing crazy or special, but I do think you gotta have a little bit of a knack for this. And also, the better the gear you have, I think the better you could um, listen to what's what you're really doing. So when you talk about, this is a good point. Let's say you're just doing this and you have a modest setup. You have a UA or whatever it is that you're running through. The microphone, the preamp, and how you're listening to it are totally crucial. So even though I'm re-ribboning this mic, I will listen to this on really top-end gear. And it really is a telltale. Like, did I get it? Does it sound good? How does the bass response? How does the human voice sound talking into it. All that matters on, on when you're doing mic repair. So if you're listening it and you're putting this into a art preamp, nothing against art, I love those and I have one. But if you're doing that and you're getting this 
unclear kind of clouded sound it's really difficult to tell what the mic's really doing and if you are really getting this ribbon to be better so one thing that will be obvious so this is the grill that came off that protects the front of the ribbon these holes um assuming are for kind of diffusion of the sound hits it and it keeps it from being a little bit um, bassy. I think it's kind of a diffusion. Um, this side is glued to it. And I don't know if that's dog hair, but that could be some kind of dog hair. I don't know what that is. Hold on. I don't think it's dog hair. I think it's just the nylon or whatever. Yeah, that's what it is. It's this. But there's one right in the middle, and that's probably not good. Did I get it? <laughs> All right. Well... This is glued to this. Um, this is actually probably protecting from some of the wind. This design is to keep it from being too bassy. So if you go like a big bass wave was to hit it, it would diffuse it. Some of the low end would bounce off and only the top end or mid range would go through. That's kind of the style of all the RCA 44s. Now, looking at this transducer that's shaped like that, uh, it's pretty identical to an R84. Now, I don't know if I have the measurements, if this would measure out right, because the Apex 205 is a small version, but this is symbolically a crude version of that. Um, I can tell you something right here. That little thing that you see right there, that means that this ribbon is sitting next to a magnet that soon this will be peeling off. So I'm gonna try to be very careful not to um, mess with that little part because what happens is these are cheaper magnets and they coat them with some kind of metal paint i don't even know what they would coat them for to make them look shiny but eventually through um pollution or erosion or you know sometimes when if you live by the ocean uh, things rust and metal will come out while well, these really fast will start to deteriorate so but for right now that looks okay. So this is the cover, putting this to the side. One other thing you'll notice here, I don't know if you can see it, this ribbon is a little bit tweaked. That is just kind of laying in there sideways. It's, it's a good size and they cut it good as far as its thickness, but still looks a little terrible. Um, as you can tell, I blew on it. Now it's really looks worse. So the performance of this ribbon, I will go out on a limb and say, it probably doesn't sound good. Um, that being said, let's take it apart. All right, so now that we have our longest ratchet ever, let's see if we can get rid of this middle section. Maybe that's where I'm, holy smokes. This thing extends. Wow. Oh. All right. That'll be it for now. That looks better. Okay. So I think the, if I'm right, these ones are smaller. So I'll take this one off. Yes, we are. And that looks about right. So on these ones, um, be very careful that you don't lose these. And actually, I will say, I do love this design. It's a little bit of hard to put the ribbons, these bolts back on once you've re-ribboned it. But it's really cool is that a lot of modern new ribbons, they'll have these little brass plates that hold the ribbon down. They have screws that you just drop inside these ones have bolts that come up. So once you put your ribbon in, you drop these plates on, they kind of fall into place. Now, these could actually fly off and go into the magnets and ruin the ribbon in. So yeah, technically, that's a bummer. But it does make installing them kind of cool because the plates won't move around. All right, so we have two larger ones. And just to show you, these... We're on the um, outside, and these were on the inside. 
So this is the bolt that was holding this down. And then as you can tell, this one's even smaller and that holds down the ribbon. So, I mean, it's obviously that bigger bolt isn't gonna fit if you made a mistake, but it's just good to know to keep them all in order and pay attention to what you're removing. So let's do this one. All right, so now let's see if our plate comes off easy. It does. Oh, there it goes. So here's the, I don't know if that's brass, but it looks brass. Could be coated to look brass. Most likely it's aluminum, maybe with some kind of brass paint or coloring. Looks like someone, looks like they just put that tanning stuff on. So, oh, you want to be darker? There you go. There it is. So that's the first little bracket that holds down the ribbon. Now the ribbon is pretty much just floundering around in there. Just We need to replace it anyways. But I can tell you this much, looking at it now, I can see the reason the ribbon was weird is I think this magnet is starting to peel. We'll know when we get inside, but that's a bummer. Uh, that's a really big bummer that this magnet is starting to come apart. It's a little bit nasty to clean it as well. I do have replacement magnets for these, but um, Shiny Box is a company that had the same style of mic. And the owner was really sweet and he's he sent me some of these magnets that can be replaced for this. But he wants me to use them only in shiny boxes if I get any. So I've got to honor that. And I don't have any extra ones I could use. So I'll have to clean this magnet up and I'll show you how I do that. So let's remove this other one. And then we'll be able to look at the magnet. So that is the bummer about these Chinese mics. Especially the Apex 205s and the Apex... Two tens and the shiny boxes and the T bones. They're all coming from the same place. And if you happen to get them with the bad magnets, it's a little bit of a bummer. And uh, getting your screw stuck in there, there it is, is a bummer too. Last one, thank you for checking in. You know, most people say, can you like this and all that stuff. I don't know. I mean, don't hate me. I'm just doing this for fun. I think it's cool. I think it's interesting for myself. And if you're interested in looking at this, then that's cool. All right. We are going to take the ribbon out. But first, let's remove this. You know, these aren't true precision. Like if you get a buyer mic, it's just spot on. Unless it's been dropped or broken, it's gonna be gonna come off exactly the same way it came on. Perfect. But so anyways, um there's a little bit of the ribbon that's in the bottom. We don't want that anymore. So remove that. That's the bottom plate with its tan on the top to make it look brass maybe it is i don't know well this is what i was talking about the design that i thought was cool about these i don't like the fact that the magnets are kind of messed up but there's the ribbon i can't tell you if this is a good i mean let's see so I've just flattened it I'm going to say this is a pretty thick ribbon because usually if this is a really high quality ribbon, probably would have already tore in my hands, which makes me think that this is a combination of something else. It's almost like a plastic coated with some kind of aluminum. Well, it's tearing, but really, like, 
a little bit harder to break than I would think. So I think a really good quality ribbon would have disintegrated in my hands. And this is just kind of still holding its form. There you go. A destroyed ribbon. That was worthy to be destroyed. Sorry. As I put it in the trash. So here's the big issue. Even though you take on the act of replacing a ribbon, um, these mics are, the only bummer is um, that. I don't know if you can see that, but. See that? That's the magnet. It's totally screwed up. It's coming up. And even that ribbon inside was a good ribbon. It's not gonna last long with that plastic coming up. So it's kind of a little thing I've done, which I don't know if this is a good thing, but I just got a little bit of tape. I want to remove that because it's obviously not gonna do the mic any good. A magnet is a magnet, so there is magnets on the other side of it, but I want to do is kind of tape this down. And I don't know if... Uh, I'm just trying to... Look at this. Just broke it. Son of a gun. Ah, oh, well... That's why when you buy these, you have to buy them in bulk. I have a bag of these it's in the trash with the ribbon. So um, these are cold tweezers. These are um, ceramic. So if you're doing any soldering, you can still use these. They don't really go bad. These do break too, so I do have to be careful. But I basically want to make the tape stick to that. And then I'm going to remove the tape, and hopefully that bad uh, paint or whatever that is that covers these will come off with it. We'll see. I didn't do it. Son of a gun. And I don't know. Sadly, I'm going to have to dig this guy out a little bit. Right, it's not doing it. Did it do it? All right, it's coming up. That's ah, gonna be a messy. There it is. It's totally nasty. Well, that's the magnetic paint or whatever that is that covers the magnet. Now it's still magnetized. This doesn't make it any less. I think this is a cosmetic thing of making the magnets. I mean, I don't know. Whatever, or maybe if like a quality magnet, this process of coating it with some kind of stainless steel finish would be a better quality. But these are from China. And that is a perfect example of a nono. And it sucks. So if you spend a lot of money on a mic, which I'm sure this is still a few hundred dollars, it's sad that that's the quality that's inside. So what I want to make sure that there's no more of those. I don't know if I'll be able to clean it up totally good, but we're going to do one more tape to make sure. The reason I'm actually using tape to it, it's really dusty and that magnetic dust or whatever that is, is actually really flammable. You don't ever want to file a magnet or cut a magnet unless you're in a professional shop and you have all the tools or the safety precautions to do that because it still is nasty material. So I'm just going to see if I can get whatever is remaining there. At least when I put the ribbon inside, um, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna go with it, so. A little bit more, more of the dust, the magnetic 
test. Um, I can see, if you can see that, there's still a little bit right there. I want to get that off because I feel like that's going to, once again, make, even if I put a new ribbon inside, it's eventually going to come up and then that's going to be nasty as well. So let's just see if we can get it, covering it with this. See if I can dig it up a little bit. Make it stick to the tape. Just gonna peel this off a little bit. I did get some. We're gonna go over it one more time. That's what's coming off. And like I said, if you fell asleep and you just woke up, you're like, what the heck is going on? What's he doing? It's basically making a bad situation a little bit better. Um, because this is so nasty and this magnetic element of the dust or whatever it is is, is you know, flammable and just kind of not cool to work with. And you shouldn't have to be dealing with an opened up magnet or the materials inside. This is just a way of, because I've had a few of these to deal with it. So it's not as messy. Um, end of the day, this mic will sound good, but you'll just have to bear in mind that if you open up your mic, if this was really bad and these were all eroded, I would say at that point, it'd be a candidate to then have them all replaced. So, so that's a little bit more that came up. And that tells you how much of that dust would be flying around if I just kind of scraped it or cleaned it. I'm gonna do one more because I can still see, at least from the eye, that there's a little piece there. And I think after that point, I don't see the other side messing up. So let's do one more. Okay. Once again, the inside of the mic is not a beauty contest. Because if it was, you'd be ugly. But then it's about how it's gonna sound more than the way it looks. So hopefully we'll get this sounding good. I'm just kind of, once again, just cleaning up a little bit more of that, kind of that residue or that dust that's coming up. A little bit more came off. Perfect world there would be none, but um, I'm gonna take that little piece off. I'll try to get that. All right. Well, so there you go. That is, to the most part, at least now the path inside this area now is clear for us to put a ribbon inside. I wanna see what the gap is to make sure I got a ribbon and that's the right size for that. Um, these you can get at Home Depot. They're about 30 bucks, 24 bucks. You can get them online, probably cheaper. Uh, this is a Husky, which is actually pretty good. So I'm just gonna double check the gap in this. So I'm setting it for millimeters and I'm um, gonna be using the other side. Just wanna kinda check it. And remember the magnets are gonna wanna grab this, so you gotta be very careful. Make sure I got it right. Right. And it's about five millimeters, a little bit more than five millimeters. That seems about right. They're all, um, I will say this the gap, even if all the transducers are the same and they measure the same between, you know, if you're, if you're talking about not where the magnets are, but where the metal is. Looks like about one millimeter or centimeter. So 
What makes this different is the magnets. The magnets are vary so much. So even if I had 10 of these mics, the thickness of the magnet is always different. So that's why you have to measure them because there's no, there's no normal uh, way because of the inconsistency of the magnet. So this one, it's a pretty good magnet. As you can tell, it just sticks out to it. So you can hear it. Yeah, it's pretty strong for looks like small magnets. This is cool. Well, let me see what I got in the ribbon department. And since this thing is a little bit nasty now, it's full of that dust, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean it with just a little bit of alcohol. Actually, I won't use the rag I was using. Um, hold on one second. Don't go away. All right, I'm back. Just got a napkin because I don't really want that nasty potter being inside my uh, trusty rag for cleaning that stuff. That's a little bit that came off. All right, just trying to be clean here. You don't want junk all over your magnets. So, that looks pretty good. You can see how this is crudely cut. It's not really some kind of bandsaw. It looks like you can almost see how it just, they just cut it out, screw it. Let's send it out. Send it to Europe. Send it to T-Bone. Apex. Okay, so now um, I have some ribbons I've already cut. I don't know if these are going to be a match, but we will find out soon enough. All right. Um, bear with me. Hold on. Still looking, hold on. I'm still here. Give me one second. If you gotta use the restroom, go ahead. All right. Sorry. These are cool things to keep your um, ribbons in as well. These are the glass kind of cooking things for your food to heat up or warm up. Um, this is just called snapware. So I put some ribbons in here that I'll cut some uh, out before I do some work. Um, these are Some of these are different sizes for different ribbons. I'll just see uh, which one looks like it's gonna be doing pretty good in there. Looks pretty good. All right, I think that one's gonna be aces. So before we lay it down, just wanna make sure that. All right, that's all right. As I drop my ribbons everywhere in a gust of wind, geez, what's going on here? them back in their cage. So the ribbons that I'm using are, I think, good quality ribbon. I think I know they are. A little bit expensive to buy, and I think with the current state of our world, they've become a little bit more expensive to get as well. Okay, so now we're gonna put this ribbon inside the mic. For all purposes here, I do tune these, but I'm gonna wing it right now because my uh, 
two pieces of gear for tuning this are in the next room and I've already started this video and I don't think you want to sit around while I'm going to run to the next room. Okay. Now, first thing is you need some Q-tips and then we'll get our alcohol again. Um, using 91%. And this is basically going to hold the ribbons in place. All right. So you grab your Q-tip. Usually, I'd get this Q-tip and clean the ribbon area. But since we've already removed some of that nasty kind of stuff, I'm not going to really do the side that I just took off that stuff. It's not really taking off too much, but... I don't want to disturb whatever of that paint's left. So I'm just gonna kinda clean up a little bit around the area. Not too much come off. So we're gonna use the other side now because now we're gonna be installing the ribbon. All right. Okay, sorry, get that a little bit there. So I'm gonna have this soak up as much alcohol as possible and then dab it in there. Same thing there. Just put a lot there. You want, this is gonna, not only is it gonna hold the ribbon, but it makes it a little bit more doable and you have a little bit more wiggle room to adjust it. Um, I've gotta find my little uh, plastic. The ones I broke earlier, so. So now we're going to lay our ribbon inside. Let me put a little bit more alcohol to make sure that's good. So now you've wet that pretty thorough. I'm going to lay it inside. Come on. Okay, that's good. When you do this all the time, it's still a little tricky. Still one little tweak and you're like cursing because you have made it a dumb mistake. Like pulling away your, um, this too fast and you don't realize that. So. So I'm checking this right now just to see it's because of that little bit of a tear in the in the magnets I want to make sure that this is not going to be snagging or touching the ribbons anywhere I'm sitting, I'm having a little tough time getting the glare of how this is going in. And like I said, um, these magnets have already been technically damaged, so it is important. And also understand that when you're putting the ribbon inside, I don't know if this will make sense to you, but if you're driving like a trailer of a truck, you have to move it in the opposite direction to make it turn the correct way. So if you're going right, you gotta turn left. It's kind of like the same with these ribbons. When you see it being crooked, you have a tendency to want to move it to the side that it's crooked on, but that tends to make it worse. So you have to go to the opposite side. So I'm gonna still wet this a little bit more. I'm still playing with this because not sure if this is really sitting the way I'd want it to sit. If that's being said, and I'm doing this where the magnet is just not cooperating because it could be crooked or something, all right, that looks good. All right. Let's 
So, that being said, we got it in. That was a little bit of a tricky one right there. Um, the test will be, even though I'm gonna put it together, I still gotta tune it, and I still gotta make sure that this magnet is not catching the ribbon anywhere. And that's super important. So it may look good, but you won't know until you clamp it down and even check it so it's a work in progress if you do this you just have to see right there just tweak a little bit a little bit more again so it's like really you find yourself talking to the ribbon saying are you really going to do this to me today buddy you can tell it's not in there the way i'd like it so i gotta lock it in Kind of lock it in by the ends. Okay, lock it in. The way you lock it, when I say lock it in, is that this ribbon is really flexible and you could push it around the corners right there, but you don't want to tear it because you may have to remove it and install it again if it's even not damaged. All right, so now we're going to be putting our nicely tanned brackets on. And that's why I like these, because they just pop right on. But here's the hard part, getting these little screws not to fly off and fly into the magnets. And I wish they were aluminum, but I don't think they are. So you kind of hold this down a little bit. And just be patient. As I spit on this and said patient, it grows. All right, yeah, and the spit helps the ribbon sound better, joke. Okay, once again, you're getting the small ones and the best you can, put them in your finger and imagine you are screwing it on. But you gotta be careful, because one slip up, ah, and it flies into the magnet just like that. Son of a gun, where did you go? Went in there. I see it, it's right under there. Son of a gun, that's why. That's why you have to be careful. Where are you? Okay, there it is, thank you. Thank you, Ribbon God. So, let's do this. I'm a little worried about that being a little bit not snug and moving around. So we're gonna, so what I like to do on these ones, you don't wanna tighten them too, even though I'm using a ratchet. Um, you wanna be careful. So I'm just gonna do it by hand. There it goes, that's tight. So hopefully that's not gonna move. Once again, back to the problem child over here, the rebel, as I talk to the mic and the ribbons and the parts, and I'm talking to myself for like an hour here, which is weird in itself. How are you all doing? What'd you do today? It's not, it's about 11, almost 11 a.m. I went and had a good cup of coffee, had a good breakfast. Kind of have to get myself psyched up to do this. It's weird. It's one of those things where you really got to like to do this. If you're just doing this because, like, there's no, there's no cool factor in working on ribbons. Because people give you your mics and they're busted and they just want them to sound good. They don't really care how you get them to sound good, even though it could be interesting. All right, so I didn't, totally tighten these down. I will later. I just wanted enough to make sure that the ribbon is snug in there. It's not going to move. So now I'm going to do the other side. So what I want to do is reapply the um, alcohol. So it's a little bit loose again, as you can see. And then I want to be able to kind of make sure I like 
the way it's dancing around in, in between the magnets. You, you're kind of looking for, I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a cat and mouse of fishing around until you get it where you think it's right. And I've got to get it where I think it's straight. And that's even before you still have to tune it. So you don't want to pull it too tight and you don't want to pull, leave it too loose. I think when these mics come, they're pretty f laxed, which means the ribbon is just floating around in there because they won't, uh, it's hard to blow a, a sagging ribbon. So I'm blowing on a little bit just to see what it's doing. All right. I'm not sure if I like that. The proof will be in um, finalizing this, but we'll do that after I've at least installed this ribbon. Okay. Still doesn't look right to me. Still look, it's really difficult to get this to cooperate with me right now. I think I need to put some more. Okay. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, so that's what we're doing right here. Now, um, we're going to get the other bracket that has the Nice tan on one side and not the other. It's kind of like your shirt. You roll up your sleeves. Kind of like that. What the heck? All right. So now we're putting the next bracket on. But I'm going to check it one more time. I'm just not really digging this. I don't know why it's not looking like it's laying flat. There it goes. That was better. Drop that on. Tan side up. Cooperate with me, please. So now we drop it in. See, I don't like that. It's not laying straight. So we're gonna remove this and that's why you gotta check it. It's not that easy. I wish I could tell you that this was smooth sailing all the time. Sometimes it's not. Now it's worse because I've got a ribbon in there that I don't want to tear. Ah, you son of a gun, you. Okay, it's almost off. All right, come on. Come on, people brother watching. Cooperate. All right, so I just blew on that to give it a little test and it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. So I can't just tell you F it and it's cool because it looks good. That's not the way it works. It's got to perform within those magnets and it's got to be great. That looks a little bit better right there. It's a weird little tug of war you have. Once again, tan side up. All right, now please play safe so I can put this bracket on. Oh, I got it dropped it. Whew. Save. So I got to get this right here. Hold on. Do it. As you can tell, you just gotta wing it sometimes. And I wanna make sure that I've got that locked in. Just gonna, by hand, tighten it down. Make sure the bracket doesn't move. And mess up my handiwork. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side. 
And like I said, the chew test is obviously, once you get it going on, it's a long ribbon. So you just gotta make sure I get it right. Thank you, Ribbon Gods, for going on easy. All right. Like I said, this is, may not be the final ribbon for this. If you do ribbons, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to um, do it a bunch of times. It's, I wish it was one and done but like i said when you get your ribbons for one mic you have to cut there's three in there there was five earlier and this is our fourth one so you know can't be precious about having to recut things again and if it doesn't sound good and that ribbon is not going to be bouncing around in the correct. You have to redo it again. For the sake of this video, we're going to just move to the process of getting this done. But I may have to come back and do this again because there's a few factors in here I'm not really digging. But let's just kind of get this going on again. So, got that in there. We have to do now is put on our our plate. different ratchet on it but let's get this on wow this is like watching a turtle walk across the street someone you know, I do these videos sometimes that are fast motion and people are like, slow that down, I wanna see what you're doing. Oh my God, this is like chalkboard action here. Well, this one was for the inside bolt. So let's see, I think it was this one, is that correct? No, it's not that one. Is it this one? Oh, that's too big, it's gotta be this one. All right, we're gonna say that's this one. Oh, but one thing I've already forgotten. Jesus, I didn't tighten the brackets good. Hold on. Cut, edit. If this was in the editing station of your movie making, we would cut. It would seem flawless. It would be like Manny is the man. He just got that, just banged it out, and it was great. Instead, here I am going in reverse because it's like when you walk out of your house and you're like, did I lock the door? And you go back and check it. And then you walk away and you go, did I lock the door? Anyways, let's take this off. Now let's go back in reverse and double check our ribbons. I think I can put a little bit of extra juice on these. Yeah, that one was good. That one was good. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, you don't, I mean, you're really holding down gold leaves, so it's not like you really need to crank these. I'd be worried about stripping these small screws. So yeah, it's just a hand torque is fine. You know, it's not like a seatbelt in your car or something, you know. Well, it, technically it is, but that foil is resilient enough to be tightened down by hand. So let's put our screw washers back on. 
Oh, you son of a gun. Come on, don't make me look bad in front of these 20 people watching this. All right? So, that's in. Let's put the washer back on. A little dance to make that work. It works. To the next one. And you know, that's why these are useful, you know? Unless you got little hands. I got big hands. Oh boy. So then, um, was it this one? Nope, it was this one. Use some ratchet action. I mean, to a certain point, you do have to care about these being tight or not because if something rattles around with vibrations, that is a bummer. And there's a lot of mics, even condensers and dynamics, if they have a screw missing or RE20s. When the foam goes bad and they start to bounce around inside, it's always not fun when you're recording bass guitar and that happens. All right, so we're going to consider this the front because that's where all the action was. Now, here's the tricky part. Putting the head basket back in. This is funny, man. That is just nasty looking, too. But some people don't like that on it because it already has some in it. It makes it sound a little bit clearer. I still don't understand what this is. I don't even know why that's there. It isn't like your ribbon is trying to escape and you got to put one more little cage on it. I almost feel like this is useless. I'm not going to put this in. I don't think it's really doing anything. This grill, this grill, that grill. And if I want to save it with this to have some, you know, extra control for wind, I'll be like, I think that's going to be fine. Now, one thing about this, when you look at it, those holes have to line up with those holes that go through the side. And, well, that's pretty crazy on the back. Take a look at that real quick. All right. Visual, how that's working. Not rocket science, but it is cool. All right, so. We have to put this head basket back on this bad boy. And we want the sides to line up with, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna need a little bit of help here. Get a little bit of tape. I can move it later. But you want the screen to be able to have the bolt go through it. So I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape there to Get it in the vicinity. I'm gonna fold this up so I can rip it off later. So that's good. And then I gotta do the other side. Looks like that was a soldering iron hole poked right into it. Smart. Let's put that right there. I think that we're even going to go further. We're going to do this. I'm going to get crazy here. Let's just do, what are we doing? Are we, are we showing people what to do? Or are we going to be knucklehead city over here? All right, so 
I'll have to tape that down. First, what we're gonna do, I know this is an illegal move, forgive me. All right, we see that. I'm gonna make a bet that was glued there. And that's what we're gonna do too. You can see a little bit of something there. A something, something. And I'm gonna just follow it through with my instincts and just say they probably just put a little bit of glue on it. And i um, gonna make that stick. not hurt anyone by putting a little bit of glue on it but that washer is not going to stay there when I want to put it through the holes so I'm just gonna get a little something something right there so when I put it in it'll stay just using some regular you know gorilla super glue give it a second so today is Sunday, and um, my band is playing in Los Angeles uh, this coming Friday at the Al Ray Theater on April the 8th. If you're not from Los Angeles or California, Al Ray Theater is a very wonderful, prestigious, cool theater. It fits about two to 300, I'm sure, capacity. It's with a band called June of 44, super killer band. Uh, they were signed at Touch Ago. But so I have some good things going on this week besides ribbon stuff. So I'm going to say, does it feel good? It feels okay. Hopefully that stays on while we do the other side. Once again, I see a little something, something there, which looks like it was glued as well. And we'll just have to recreate that. Let's get that tape off. We'll use that later. All right, once again, some more crazy glue. And you know, even me doing this, you could probably get away with not doing it, but that's the way it came. There must be some reason why it's still there. And, um, I'm sure it has something to do with the cage and the grill fitting tight and snug, and we want that. We don't want it to be bouncing around. All right. So we are aligning this to be the best we can. So obviously there's no um, uh, The screw that goes through this is not going to be really needing this for uh, threads or anything. It's just basically a washer of space to keep the head baskets sitting firm once you install it. So I'm going to give it a second to set. I don't know if the other side did pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I think that's good. Now we can, well, I may want to wait a little bit again because if I install this, it's gonna to stick to that. Well, maybe that's good. Let's check it out. Just get my tape ready to finalize this. enough uh, let's see I'll put another piece of tape there just to hold it down all right that didn't work on that side that's close enough so in reverse order we now put the head basket in but we haven't yet screwed it into the main body yet because 
That's not the way this one works. So I've got that end. It's gonna get all, it's like you're, it's like putting on some boxers and putting your pants on. They're not really going in right. That's too much information for you right now. All right, so that, come on, you just do me good, do me right. Snug. All right. We are close on that one, but not super close. All right, well, that's going to be one screw. We are going to drop this one in first. So this, you know, that is somewhat aligned correct. This is still considered the backside because that's where the wiring was coming in. And we'll check that later with the Cricut to make sure. So that's why I said, even after this is video's done, you still kind of got to do a few things in the process of getting this to be correct and right so I don't have I can't see that there it is and you are off so let's put that correct all right just need a little help here to get that going okay it's close enough so we get that other one with the washer on the inside see if we can get this going in Do it for daddy. Come on, we need this. We're live. We can't fail. I'm gonna put this one a little bit too tight, so loosen this one a little bit. Give it some more wiggle room. So it's getting caught kind of in that material. There it goes. Ah, yeah. All right. Woo, there we go. So. This is how we're gonna say the front is going down. Gonna tuck that in. Let's take off our tape that was holding it. So this looks like it's gonna be dictating to come on a one way only. So that's the front. That's the T-bone that is not lining up correct. So I'm assuming this, is that right? That's a drummer next door. So I've, once again, as I've maneuvered this on, I've got to switch the head basket, son of a gun. Hear that drummer? Of all the drummers that are in my, or near my studio, he's one of the best ones. He's got super rad, heavy sounds. Listen to that guy. Well, after all that beautiful handiwork, we need to turn this basket around. And it's gotta be this way. The figure eight, it's gotta be on the front. I know, I know. You could have been screaming that and saying, Manny, you've got it on the wrong way, mate. Manny, can you hear me? Sorry. 
Now I got this side to do. That so goes on easy. Well, the good thing is, though, it tells you how this was made. You can't put it back together unless it's done correctly. And that drummer, it's got like a Tommy Lee groove. All right, there it is. So as you can tell, T-bone, figure eight, screw, and looking down, this is the side that we changed the ribbon that is considered the front. So I guess there's no way to do it wrong. You'd be confused like me when you put it back together. All right, so let's pop this in. That's good. Now we haven't put this guy on yet because we gotta screw the head basket in. So here's one screw, two screw, and the bead. Oh, come on, beat. Yeah. Badass drummer. You can't say it's ever boring here. Except when that happens. I heard a flam. He did too. All right, so that one's not all the way tight. We're just kind of locking it in. Let's do the next one. Lined up. So obviously this is not a film studio. It's in a huge industrial building. Plenty of musicians around, a lot of good energy. Even though that drummer's playing during this, I'm not mad because someone's making music. What's wrong with that? And actually in that room where that drummer is, I've recorded three of the bands there. So there's a good chance that guy, who I like his drumming, will possibly be recording with me sometime. So gotta appreciate it, gotta dig it. Alrighty, now, so now this one we're gonna just go for it. As I'm tightening, I can feel the, the whole chassis start to kind of tighten up, feel snug, feels good, all the screws in good. It's correct, the order, I know you're yelling at me. These guys get them in a little better. Actually, I'm, I am gonna do these a little bit better in, yeah, that's it. So let's kind of get those guys in a little bit. Oh, you gotta do, uh, gotta change it. Oh boy. T-Bone, how you doing? You feeling all right? All right. So now we have a little parts bin. Our screws. See this watch? This is a Casio. So if you thought it was a fancy watch, it's not. I think, um, Microsoft Cat, what's his name? Bill Gates? It's one of his favorite mics. Now I love Submariners by Rolex, but in this day and age, you don't want to walk around with one. I really dig this. Super classy. Anyways, just thought I'd share that. All right, so now we're gonna put on our bracket again. Now, obviously this is gonna dictate, that's the rear of it. I've seen some guys put these on backwards, but since I already did the head basket, let's try to look good for the people. So that looks about right. Now, just hold it down tight with your hands. 
strap on our cool washer. Same thing here. The beat. Boom, bop, boom, boom, bop. All right. Now, all these washers that you're putting on the inside and the outside, that's just to make it so it not only is it hold tight when you tighten it, but you can still have some room to turn it. So, all righty. Now, usually I'd put the logo on. That's a pretty big little spot there. Um, my mic company, OGMC. Yeah, I know I'm gonna tag it. I know you're probably once again screaming at the camera. Don't do it, don't do it. But this is not gonna cover that. So I'm thinking, what do you do? I'm gonna put it in the back. Why not? T-Bone, you outdid me this time. You made your logo too big that when I tag you, it's not gonna be proper. So, there you go. OGMC, but this is what we're seeing today. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, I've got some tuning to do. I may have to change this ribbon again, but at least you saw how this came apart, how even I almost put this grill on backwards, but the holes would dictate that it must go on this way to be the front. I will check this with the crickets, like I mentioned, to see if after all this is done, this is positive, that's negative, which would be the right way, because you want to be singing in the positive side, not the negative side. Unless you're using it for drums, it doesn't matter, but you want your wave files to go up, Positive, not down, negative, if you're looking at the dog. There you go. OGMC, Manny Nieto signing off. That was an hour and a half. Jesus, what are we doing today? Shouldn't we be doing other things like going to the movies or making a record? Recording that guy on drums? All right, see you later.